welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 145. This episode is with Matthew Pye and Joshua Mitten, who are both filmmakers in the Atlanta area. I was connected to them through my good friend and previous guest, Dimitri Blanco, and I'm so glad he did. Uh, We talked about how Matt and Josh met in film school before dropping out to pursue their dreams more directly, the different short films they've made together, the processes behind each of those, learning how to navigate the business side of filmmaking, and they've got a new movie coming out. It is called Concrete Savannah. It will be available on February 2nd on all VOD platforms and is currently available for pre-order now. So be sure to check that out. It's going to be a good time. It's a horror movie. looks really cool. So we talked about the process of making that, how they actually shot some of it on film, which is really cool, Uh, the makeup processes for the poster. It's crazy. They're both super cool. I was really excited to talk to them, so be sure to check out their movie. But before you do that, check out this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 145, with Matthew Pye and Joshua Mitten. Theme song time. Yeah, we're in Atlanta. Cool, cool, cool. Are you guys from there? Uh, I'm from Florida. Oh, cool. That's where I'm at. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. What part? Uh, Naples. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All yeah. the way down. <laughs> You're from the good part of Florida. Yeah, the nice. Yeah, part. arguably. Yeah. <laughs> the meth just didn't reach. It's like right there, you know. <laughs> the nice meth wall. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> exactly exactly it's it's a meth adjacent yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's cool though you're in a you're from jacksonville i don't think i've been to jacksonville that's like way up there yeah you're good you don't need to visit it's it's yeah (laughs) that's the bullet really (laughs) that's right that's right so i know matt and josh yes beautiful look at that it's like i did my research where where are you from josh I was born in Louisiana, but I did live oh. in Florida for about 10 years. So that's where we met, met each other. Gotcha. Got, where's home? Like when you think about it. Um, really weirdly here now, because this is where my parents like moved up here. So uh, that I'm makes sense. Over the place. Sure. Wherever yeah, that are. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I always wonder that with people that move, because like I'm from North Carolina, but I moved down here when I was like six. But oh. for some reason in my brain, I'm like, yeah. Home is North Carolina, but I haven't been there like, well, I mean, maybe because I visited like every like five, six years would go back. So I'm like, oh, just keep it fresh. But like, I didn't, I didn't grow up there. It's weird. It's a weird, it's weird how that works, isn't it? You want to keep that cred, you know? That, yeah, exa- that's what it is. You know what I mean? Just enough to say I'm not from Florida, you know? <laughs> You're coming to the band. Oh, I'm from North Carolina. That's right. That's right. You just. Florida. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the key is plausible deniability. You know, <laughs> that's that should be the slogan of Florida with Florida man. Just be like the the goal is plausible deniability. Actually, when you talk to an accountant about moving to Florida, that's the first thing they bring up. <laughs> <laughs> Low tax and plausible deniability. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hey, what more do you need in life, really? You know, those those are the sta- the pillars the pillars of a long happy existence. Exactly. Not bad. Not bad. So, were you in Jacksonville for 10 years or what part of Florida were you in, Josh? Jacksonville, yes. Gotcha, gotcha. Is that where you guys met? Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Film school briefly. Right. Oh, cool, cool. Just long enough to realize it might not be necessary? Yeah, right. really. <laughs> <laughs> and that yeah. film shut down. So yeah. yeah. Still yeah. validated. Yeah, I think. You know? <laughs> just, a, just enough to not have to look at 100 grand of debt. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah yeah it's kind of interesting how that works though right especially in like the creative arts because yeah. when you think especially with the internet i mean there's almost nothing you can't google you know yeah it's bonkers i they find tr- that's a common story yeah, with the equipment and then you find out like you don't really get access to it and you're like well what am i doing and they yeah. don't even <laughs> they have the latest stuff so you're like oh this is not useful my phone's better than that yeah <laughs> 
isn't isn't that weird especially like i think about that a lot like with technology and how quickly it advances like i, I imagine we're probably around the same age i was born in 91 and yeah. so like i remember like cell phones in seventh grade were the bricks yeah. and now they're like supercomputers and that's only in half of my lifespan so far yeah. so you're like sheesh to, to go from like you need film school with their film equipment to your cell phone being better is like oh man I'm yeah. really running out of excuses yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for procrastinators yeah, exactly. out there <laughs> yeah for real for real it's th that's that double-edged sort of like i'm inspired but also that's a lot of work was was movies always the objective like you went to film school so i imagine it was pretty in front um for for me i always i've always done a lot of stuff like i played music i worked as a sound engineer oh what um really? I always wanted, yeah i always wanted to um make movies i think you were the same way right yeah really like for me it was like since the fifth grade i just sort of made um films with my friends and stuff cool and then you're like, oh, I can do this. This is like a fun thing. Sure, sure. Oh, I guess I'll go to film school and see what happens. Right, right. Was was film school different than you expected? Because it it's like we're kind of wired that way, right? It's like there's the track of like choose what you want to do, go to school for it is. But with creative arts, it's so wild west, you yeah. know. And that's what your parent like. Our parents, we we've come to realize ultimately our parents are very good natured people. They're like. Why don't you go to a film school? They don't know it's a cutthroat, like, <laughs> you know, lies and right, bubblegum, right. you know? So, right. But, like, uh, so that was the realization for me. One was, like, it felt like it wasn't very artistic. Like, mm. it was very, like, commercial-minded. Like, Oh, yeah. As soon as you walked in the door, they're like, listen, you're probably not going to make movies, but you can make commercials. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, it just didn't do it for me. Yeah. You know? And they just didn't have like what I was expecting. This place didn't even have a film history course. Oh. And that was one of the things I was like, finally, I'm going to get to just dive deep into movies. I'll watch all the cliches. You know, sure. like, we didn't watch anything. And I was like, what? This is up. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to do it on my own. And then I was like, I, I guess you, you can do it on your own. And, yeah. and that makes it more fun because it's like personal. You know, you didn't, yeah. you're like forcing you to do it. You discovered it. So. Yeah, totally. A good thing in the end, but it was like a weird experience. I bet. I, how long did you last? I last, I think it was like a, two years, maybe because I had to. Okay, that's for, that's commendable. I was, I was six months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did get the loans though. So he yeah. was paying it himself. So yeah. he was like, Oof. I, get out of here. Oof. I was trying to just pay it off as I was going and after a while, I was like, no, thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think this information's free somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is kind of sobering when you think about, like, I love talking to indie filmmakers and stuff like that. Like, the, it's so business-minded. You know, there's that cliche, like, film business, what's the bigger word? Business. It's so about, like, on paper, how do you make the math make sense on the other end? It, right. You got to kind of find your way to be creative in the pursuit. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's 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 like painting with a gigantic paintbrush. Yeah. You have to hire a hundred people to carry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. But still try and have like good form and style. Uh huh. But I like. I think. I think we both like that aspect of it as well as that it is this um magic act of handling money and art and. Yeah. Sure. Was that was this something you kind of had to learn the hard way then, being that you sort of left it? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, everything I, I I think in the film industry is learning the hard way. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like otherwise you don't you you're gonna eventually learn that lesson. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I guess you know, lots yeah. of ups and downs on the journey to making. A yeah, movie for sure. Always, always. I, I think I think movies are like the most collaborative art there is because yeah. you can. I mean, I guess you can make a movie by yourself, but it's not. Eh, you know, you need a team. You yeah. need a good amount of people and coming together, and it's the culmination of everyone doing their part for the final product that brings it. And you got to convince someone to give you the money to do that. Right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty important. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a class on that in the first six months? <laughs> <laughs> go to film school you're gonna get in debt that was a yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right 
I could teach someone like in a week how to make a film, but it, it'd take like five years to tell them how to get money. You know? Sure, sure. <laughs> the real magic, the real magic is the 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 math involved. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm interested though. You said you were into audio stuff first. That's yeah. that like it's similar, but it's also very different. So what was it that drew you to like audio production and what made you switch to movies? Um, well, I've, I'd always wanted to make movies since I was a little kid, but I saw it that like there was no feasible way to do it. Mm -hmm. and my parents were very strict. They wanted me to be like an engineer or a psychologist. And I actually, I went to school for psychology for a couple of years before dropping out and becoming an intern at a, a recording studio. Oh, cool. But I, I had a band and we got signed to a small label in Jacksonville. Hell yeah. And um, one of the producers at the record studio was like, hey, you're really good. You heard some of my demos. Why don't you come intern? And then that's how I got into it. And then I just started doing it for work here and there and um, doing bands and stuff like that. And uh, then I met Josh and uh, we were both going to that school and it seemed like possible for the first time to do something. Mm -hmm. That's when I started really digging into the business side of it. Sure, sure. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I have the right type of personality to be able to make stuff like this happen. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Did you play or did you sing in the band? I did a little bit of everything. Yeah, you did. <laughs> That's cool. What'd you play? Uh, guitar and vocals and keys and stuff like that. All of it. That's awesome. So then Josh, you're like, perfect. Yeah. Let's do this. He also offered to help with my homework at the time. Oh, like, boom. You're in film school, you're like, oh, I'll get all my friends to help me out. They'll just be they'll just be so excited and yeah. no one, like asking <laughs> someone to help you move. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then Matt actually, you know, came over and I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> it, that's, that is the most perfect analogy I've ever heard. It is like asking someone to move. I've never thought about that before, but on an indie set, it really is. They're like, do you want to come do a million jobs and watch it fail and try and figure it out on the spot? For no money whatsoever. For no money, yeah. <laughs> Eating a pizza if we can Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. If you're, yeah, let's see how they do first, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to waste the good pizza money josh you know that's funny so when you guys first decided you wanted to start collaborating on things how did that process go did somebody have the first idea and you're like oh we could kind of make this um yeah like i was helping him out with his school project and i think it was just supposed to be like a scene or something but we were like let's make a short film yeah basically and we kept doing that and then um like I directed a short film and then he would direct one and then we were like let's uh, make some together and we made uh, our first short together here in Atlanta but oh uh, we I think we always knew like we wanted to make features like mm -hmm. uh, we don't I don't particularly like short films you know interesting it's like there's some great ones I've seen mm -hmm. they're just not like I always loved you know a feature film yeah sure you really have time sure yeah. you can invest yeah yeah and right like um, so we, we we pursued that for quite a long time with like different producers and mm -hmm. and just you know as everything happens it one thing fizzled out to another until we were able to make this movie was it so was your first short film together was that in a field of weeds uh no that was um this land is uh their land oh really that was first Oh, so full disclosure, I've seen them all. So nice. well done. Well done, gentlemen. That one, uh, that one made me sad. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yep. Yep. That one made me sad, which is I, I, as a compliment, I was able to feel from it, but that was very, uh, I was like super in, I love how that was shot. Like that was your first, that's crazy. That was your first one. Usually first ones are like, that was Josh shot that by the way. Really? Josh, dude, congrats. That's huge to come out of the gate swinging like that. Normally, the first three, you kind of just shove under the rug. You know, like, this is actually my first one. <laughs> yeah, far earlier one. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. I would have got that out of the way. And then... Yeah, those have been deeply yeah. buried right. under, under the sea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the statute of limitations haven't quite hit yet. <laughs> yeah. that, that movie was really inspired um, by have you seen Roy Anderson any of his films yeah 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 that was sort of inspired by his kind of you way of this land is their land yeah yeah I'm just setting the camera and then like, yeah 
able to play in front of it. We had just been watching a bunch of his movies. That makes sense. I got that sort of vibe. I got that sort of Wes Anderson also kind of feel like just stationary looking into the lens. Yeah. Crazy. I think when you're starting out making short films, it's like you almost have to like just emulate what you really dig. And yeah. then and then you're like, okay, well, I did that. And maybe it is or is not for me or there's aspects that I like about mm -hmm. it. But that's sure. Really I think it all like uh, starting filmmakers should do that. They should just like, without any um, shame, just like try and emulate their yeah. favorite directors. You know? I think 100%. that's easier because it's so overwhelming to yeah. be like, try and come up with something completely fresh and you have to go through the whole process that it is yeah. better. Try something. See sure, I totally agree. I totally agree. I've heard like stunt performers as well uh, talk about how if you want to get good at stunts, just shot for shot, recreate your favorite stunt scene. And then you learn how it's made while you're doing it. Yeah. So there is a sort of thing. I mean, Tarantino talks about like he stood on the shoulders of giants for his whole career. It's like, I enjoy this. So I'm doing this. And then it's just his version of that. It yeah. worked for a reason, yeah. you know? Yeah. You don't have to like Dutch angle everything. It's like, come <laughs> on, guys. <laughs> no, it, it is like, you know, you know an art in general is a conversation from one generation to the next. I agree. I agree. With the, this land is their land. Was it always intended to not have like dialogue? Um, that's something we wanted to try, but mm -hmm. mostly out of necessity. It's like, <laughs> sure. We move. We, we took the leap to move to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were like, cause we were bootstrapping everything at the time. We were like, okay, it's very difficult one to pay for a sound man. Cause they do yep. a hard job and they they cost a decent amount yep. to mm -hmm. both. and totally uh it's we didn't want to do it ourselves because we didn't have the knowledge really mm -hmm. so we, let's you know since this is a short film let's let's work on our chops and see how we can tell a story just visually just sure. do it you know like we never really like wanted to get our films like out into film festivals because they were more like experiments to us you know? sure just sketches right yeah. mm -hmm. well that's cool like have you always been good at that sort of like giving yourself license to learn yeah i think so yeah, i think yeah you know, uh not through not without like uh a lot of truth feeling bad about it trial yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure sure you're like i'm a piece of shit but i won't stop right that's but, right that's the key yeah. that's what I, I find that's the key to all of this <laughs> exactly it's i i as a creative i find that's the hardest part for me it's like not kneecapping myself along the way you know to be like finish not perfect kind of thing is so difficult you know yeah that's yeah. what it, it's at least been nice with the two of us if we have each other so one thing sure really stressful or you enter some existential crisis at least we can be in that together sure know? Yeah, I, I mean, that's got to make a world of difference. Actually, I wondered that as well, because you, so for This Land is Their Land, one of you directed, one of you wrote, you both did both. How did, how did this happen? That was the first one we both worked on together. How does that work? How do two people direct? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's not like you're both there and mm -hmm. you're both like, you know, someone might be like, uh, how about we do this in a wide shot? But mm -hmm. That's like the minutia of it. When it comes down to like directing together, it's really about like understanding a feeling of the thing you're trying to create. And if you're both on the same page of that feeling, mm -hmm. then it's just two heads working to solve one problem. You know. Gotcha. I think that's the best way I could sum it up. Is like, yeah, we we're both lucky enough to like the same stuff and have the same sort of ideas about directing. Sure. We just like. We, we would write a story and be like, okay, this is this sort of feeling we're trying to go for. And then everything else is just a work, you know? Yeah, whatever hones into that kind of feeling. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. The, the, and also, like, you have to be, I imagine, on the same frequency there. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I can imagine it'd be the worst. Where it's just, you know, he'll suggest something. It's like, yeah, that's right. You know? Sure. Yeah. That's cool. That's really special. To have someone that you can collaborate like that so fully. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. You met the guy. Yeah. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I, I'm, I am blown away by that was your first one out the gate. Because I, I, some of the worst things I've ever seen, I'm in them. So I, it's <laughs> that's really impressive. 
and the location shoots were awesome like with the bridge and the river and that mural just oh yeah good job that's just all local stuff that we had yeah. around here man yeah that's pretty good that's pretty good what you, where'd you go from there what would you do after that one we did this short film called the lonesome whippoorwill yeah. oh yeah again fantastic man, the cast in that one sheesh yeah they they that was our first like we had a producer yeah because you know um someone saw the first uh, this land is their land and then we got a producer and a cinematographer and a sound guy and some money dude that was fun that was the first time we were like uh had help like real help sure we saw like with with each increasing amount of help you get the more you can focus on you know, the story at hand yeah so that was fun it was it was a good experience, something we needed to make the leap to making a, uh, a feature film. Yeah, sure. That was what? like the first really trusting people. You have to trust them. To, yeah. Yeah, that was, you know, had its own difficulties. But then you're like, oh, what a great gift everyone will give to you. If you're yeah. Like, that like super, that like pure collaboration. It's like you kind of, you almost have to, which I imagine as a director is that much more of a process relinquish parts of control of the vision it, like the, it's just the importance of a team yeah. you know having people that are on par with what you need the vision to be you had to, you had to cherish the idea for so long to get it there and work yeah so funny and then you just have to kind of give it away or hope that they'll or like let people in yeah. that's a, a big part of directing yeah. is like try and get people on your wavelength and usually that's a wavelength of like having fun yeah and like sure this is a very luxurious job that we get to do and we get to sort of play in a sandbox and it's like, let's treat it that way instead of another day at the docks, you know? Right. Sure. You know, once you get people that way, then they're having a great time and that's when good shit happens in my opinion is when your crew is like right there with you in the trenches. Sure. I agree with that. Makes it way easier to work as well. You're like, yeah. All right, we're, this is going to be a long day guys. It's like, but if you're having fun, you're not, sheesh how many takes are we doing of this <laughs> that shoot definitely was long we ended up like filming all night to yeah. get it done we were up for like 48 hours straight yeah yeah so you're just getting loopy with sleeplessness sure wait you shot that whole thing in a weekend yeah yep what yeah. really i think it was like 14 pages a day or something and yeah. then it got cut down we got two nights at the georgian terrace which is here in atlanta uh-huh so we just had to get it all done and that wow and you, you know the roof sh roof shot yeah at the end we weren't supposed to be up there right yeah so that was sort of like crazy and actually like our, our cinematographer hopped the railing and we're <laughs> hooking to some power so we could like light it it was yeah it was wild it was fun though i like that stuff yeah it's exciting yeah, yeah. sure when we got up there there was some rappers up there taking some photos and then of course photographer was like hey i'll film a video for your instagram real quick that way they get out of there you know? sure <laughs> Good job of solving that situation because he yeah. was like oh we only got so so long to get this we had someone we watching the door and the yeah. elevator yeah. Like, there you go we just knew we were gonna get, yeah. get kicked out but in reality we probably could have been up there all night yeah really <laughs> sure i guess <laughs> i love that you're in a place where you think you're going to get found out and then you have your actor like scream really loud yeah. <laughs> we'll do this at the end just in case this is what brings them <laughs> like we had a plan b that we were gonna do at a different place sure for that shot because we're like i don't know we might not get this so let's see if we can do it and we tried to do that first and when we got yeah, we, there we conceded to just going to yeah, plan b we read yeah. like, everything up and then when we got there they're like are you guys with pitch perfect three or whatever yeah, like no movie. no and they're like well they actually <laughs> they kicked have, us out they've rented this whole place so you but guys we had get out here. we had permission <laughs> yeah so we were like okay you know what for the sake of not like pissing off our crew let's just go to our b option that didn't work out and then we had no choice but to go for <laughs> good yeah. and then it ended up being you know it worked perfect a good thing <laughs> i think so i think so that's great. How did you come up with that idea for a story? Like an indoor Western is such a cool take on a story type, you know? It's like, I don't know if he, I don't know if he would care too much, but like the lead actor Raj. Yeah. It's pseudo based on his life experience. Like, bit, yeah. Oh, sweet. He's this guy from 
you know, born in Southern India, but like lived in Atlanta most of his life. And he loves country music and he, he plays guitar and he sings well. Hell yeah. Uh, he, you know, he's just a very interesting character. Yeah. So we were very inspired by that. And then like, I think we were just like listening to like Hank Williams and Roger Miller yeah. and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. and then it was at a necessity and we were like, we can't do a Western, even though we want to do one, but we could do one indoors you know <laughs> oh yeah that's sort of idiosyncratic but yeah you know there's fun. something funny about this sort of like i guess like guy in the tech industry secretly wants to be a rhinestone cowboy you know? yeah An interesting twist yeah i loved it i i love things that are like uh, that's some of my favorite kind of art that's like familiar but a different twist on it yeah. you know what i mean it's just such a cool it's like you said like do the things that you like do a western that you like but let's let's just tilt it just a little bit that was cool. That was, I can't believe you shot that in two days. It, yeah. And it looks good. <laughs> How many drafts are you going through for these shorts? Like from this land is your land. There's not dialogue, but I imagine there's a long process. For this one, that's very dialogue heavy. Um, I think there was a few yeah. drafts of that one. I can't quite remember. But never too many. Yeah, really, really no. Like, well, that's cool. Not not on the shorts. It's like uh, I don't know. You don't work as hard on the shorts. Right. Yes. <laughs> sure. Banna was weirder too. Yeah. So that's not how you. Yeah, it. for the feature we didn't have a script. We didn't have one. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we just we had an outline, and then I I would write sides on the day or the day before, just mm-hmm. write sides, and then we try and find it on set. Yeah. If we had to adjust since we were making it for such a low budget, we just had to adjust. For what we could get yeah you know? sure we had certain ideas in mind but then we wanted the story to be flexible enough it's like oh we have this opportunity let's take advantage of that yeah oh interesting like i think like uh we had multiple projects before making our feature that failed in the development process yeah. sure and it was such a hell like an existential hell mm-hmm. i think we were like let's keep the story as close as to our chest as possible and not let anyone in sure give them sort of like an idea of where we're going so then no one can tell us bef- what we already probably know which is like how are you going to do this scene and usually the answer is i don't know man we're going to figure it out sure and we were able to but i think part of not letting people in they would see the footage of a shoot we do and be like oh this is cool and they'd have this like refilled faith and our ability to finish. Yeah, sure. I did read the whole thing to be like, you can't make this movie. And I, yeah. <laughs> I won't let you. You're insane. There's no way you're going to be able to do this. Yeah. Sure. Always. Yeah. That's, that's how it goes. Anyone looking at any kind of art is like, spaceship? Yeah. Mm. It's like, just, it, it's not a real spaceship. My God. Just like, for a second. It's good, but how are you going to get a mansion? Yeah, you can't get yeah. a mansion. <laughs> is that going to happen? Yeah. Like, let me worry about that. All right. <laughs> I know a guy. That's right. Exactly. That's the 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 indie film credo. I know a guy. And if <laughs> yeah. not, I'll find a guy. <laughs> That's neat. What so were there things like you talked about you've done these shorts that have led up to a feature, right? Were there things that you learned along the way in the shorts that have like super stuck with you? Yes. I would say so, but oddly enough, it has very little to do with the art of filmmaking and more the art of producing interesting because like you can i feel like you can sort of practice filmmaking every time you watch a movie you know every time sure and then in the making of it you're you're done you're not to me you're learning little things about filmmaking this works or maybe this angle doesn't work or but the biggest lessons i i took away from it personally were how to deal with people which is oh good point it's like everything else is intuition to some degree. You sure you build up a repertoire of the art that you like. And if you're, you know, a savvy enough person, you can enact that in some way that looks good and is stylish. But dealing with people is like <laughs> way, way harder than making them. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. How about you, Josh? Anything uh, like stand out that you're like, oh. I think it's also just learning to have faith in the process, you know. Yeah. Oh, you know, good point. Sort of see like, okay, if I was worried that, like when you get your first cut of something, it's not great, but mm. then like, the editing process actually refines it. And so you can learn to be like, I don't need to get stressed about the fact this isn't great. I, I haven't 
finished it yet. You know? Sure. So it's just learning that like this is what it looks like when it's not done at each stage along the, the, the way. And it's basically just doing that enough times, I think, is helpful as a filmmaker, which is hard to do. It's hard to go sure. through enough time. Yeah. And right. You, there's like a monumental differences for each stage of the process. It's like when you're first cutting it, it just it just feels like shit. Just yeah. <laughs> but you know, maybe for good or bad, once a movie fully goes through post production, it's mm -hmm. watchable. It doesn't matter even if it's a bad movie, it's watchable. Yeah. Sure. So to I don't know if that's good for film or or. <laughs> Good for the industry you, <laughs> you can at least trust that you know that yeah. like it's gonna at least be watchable you know? right right you know it's another story sure when you when so then when you guys got started doing this stuff was that something you had to come to terms with that like or, or did you go into it being like okay so this is going to be a process it might not look great in the beginning like uh, not for me i i was like so distraught yeah <laughs> the realization of what it takes was sort of for me like a like oh man because it's it's almost a cruel thing to be like we need a little bit more money or we sure. need a bit more access to equipment that sounds like in maybe our conventional wisdom like well maybe you're just not working hard enough or maybe you're not talented enough sure like, oh, I'm pretty sure if we had this equipment <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a weird headspace to be in at least sure the, yeah it definitely was like that dealing with all that sort of stress it's crazy yeah i'm 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 not good at that i've learned I, i've worked with the directors in the past like do you want to see a rough cut i'm like no i do not because i'll be like i'm terrible and then when it's done i'm like actually it's pretty good like yeah i know it's like yeah. cooking i i hate cooking because yeah. like it looks like mush and then at the end it's pretty good but i'm like this looks so gross right now like and you have to well, convince yourself i too can cook right? yeah I'm true creature that was that can't cook you know so i think it's the same thing of like you want to go to film school and then you're like, oh, can I do this? Can I personally do this? And then sure. you know, that crisis. And I think it's just like going through the process enough of like, yeah, you know, just take it a step at a time. But right. That's hard, especially when you're younger. It's hard not to like only see the end result. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. That makes sense. It's like a, with with doing it, you get the confidence in the process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that you know that there is one because i think a filmmaking could seem chaotic that there's no structure to it even when sure. you, like to an untrained mind a movie might seem like it has no structure it's just right and when you really look at it like no there's actually a lot of structure that's occurring and just becoming familiar with that and learning to, to yeah. have faith in it and use it getting more comfortable on sets is a big part i think yeah you know, just like being able to walk on a set and know people are going to be looking to you for answers but that's what you want to do and at first you're like nervous but maybe you just don't think about like well this is what i asked for sure <laughs> but once you settle into that it's it's just fun you know it's just a good time that makes sense it's like that old adage you know a dream job is still a job yeah. it's like this is what i want to do but it's like yeah but also like <laughs> everyone so wants to be an actor but 16 hour days they 16 hours <laughs> <laughs> Of his two jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Was directing always the 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 goal for you guys? Be like, I want to be a director. That was the position. Yeah. So so yeah, absolutely. It was just many years for me being like, that's not possible. Yeah. Sure. Of course. I'd be very like realist that way of like you're never you know they'd be like you're not gonna make it. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> They've been very supportive actually. That's awesome. That helps so much. Like any one, like one, I find that creative people, one pat on the back can give you enough fuel for miles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A little with, it's with, all it takes. With my parents, I think it was like years of us fighting. And then it was just like one day they were like, huh, I guess you really want to do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're maybe not crazy. Yeah. That's right. You're, you're really not going to give this up, huh? <laughs> And then it's been good since then. It's been all good. In the same way, you got to whittle your own self down to be like, all right, we can do this. Yeah. We can, we can check this math out. So what is your, like, when you come up with an idea, what is your general process from the time that you come up with the idea to the time that you're done making it? I say that we get like a kernel of an idea. Mm -hmm. 
usually it's like or maybe even an image and then we'll get like a story but then uh, just a story is not usually enough for us like we want like there's got to be like a something underneath it that attracts us to it sure that's what keeps you alive while making a movie is that like understory of what you're making it for and that's hard to put into words even sometimes but the poetic quality sure that meat that you don't necessarily see that's just yeah of a thing yeah yeah really after is what story what kind of story has enough mystery where even when you're done with it you know i can't remember who said it but i I like the idea that a film should be smarter than you are i like it because it's like should be a culmination of everything you've done and and it still contains for you a mystery sure i don't know what that means you know but yeah right like you can learn from it that makes sense and like that's art you know what i mean art is beyond just like oh here's the box because somebody could be like did the blue symbolize this i'm like it did now (laughs) because you feel that way yeah that's right that's right having done so many now does it get into a routine when you're like oh we can just check these boxes yeah i mean certainly i think the more you learn the less you have to uh, concentrate on like structure sure and you can really focus on like the meat and potatoes of the story you're trying to tell. Mm-hmm. That gets easier every every script you write, you know, every every movie you make. So just being That's cool. to settle into you know the art form of it. Sure, sure. We have a mutual friend yeah. in Dimitri. I love that man. Me too. So, how did you guys meet Dimitri? He what. So one of the executive producers of our film, mm-hmm. uh, he was his roommate, or still is. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, Dimitri was trying to produce some stuff here in Atlanta, mm-hmm. but not getting much bites because he's from Naples and all. You know how it is. All your yep. one place it takes a while to establish yourself. Oh yeah. And he was looking for <laughs> horror movies to produce. And our mutual friend, I guess, and his roommate didn't tell him. About oh. <laughs> so he put out a call for PAs. Ah. Dimitri answered the call. Yeah. And, and, and I, I went over to our friend's house. It was our executive producer. He also had like lenses that we were borrowing from him. So I went to mm-hmm. pick those lenses. And I was telling him, like, his friend was there. And I was like, tell him, we're going to go do the shoot. He's like, oh, I'm going to shoot too. Wait, is that that same shoot? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. You're coming to? He's like, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I didn't even know that he had talked to him. And you're like, it's my shoot. Yeah, I was like, it's my <laughs> right, <yeah>. shoot. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But long story short, we just could tell, like, you know, you knowing Dimitri, he's he's a very vibrant, like, energetic guy. Oh, and, he's the best. And yeah. he's a really hard worker. And we were like, this guy, is, and I was like, uh, do you ever want to be a producer? And he said, you know, man, I've been saying lately, I don't want to be a producer. I am <laughs> one. And I was like, all right, that's our guy. Damn right. So he became a producer towards the end of the filmmaking and then through post-production, which was invaluable. And uh, yeah, he's been, it's been nothing but great work yeah, with him. I just wish we had met him earlier. Yeah. For most, I feel the same way. He's yeah. such a big help. He really is. He's the, the greatest. Fun. He's the greatest. And I hope he's listening to this. That way he gets embarrassed. Me too. (laughs) Over and over. We love you, sweet boy. That's right. That's right. Me too, Dimitri. (laughs) So you you made the jump. You made the jump from shorts to feature. Why now? Uh, I think we were just like uh, making short films. You have to like try and find like a little hook to grab people. And that ended up inevitably making us make short films that maybe weren't as close to the type of movies we wanted to make mm-hmm. fear or necessity or what have you. So we were like, we really want to make a feature because we really want to do just exactly the type of movie that we want to see that we want to make that makes us interested. So we were kind of just like, well, you know, I have no interest in making any more short films. So the only other option is to make a feature. Sure. And um, we, we made this uh, our last short film, which we haven't really put out there, is like a uh, cyberpunk. Oh, cyberpunk sweet! 
film. Um, and while it was fun, we were like, okay, this is fun. We got to do this. And it was informative of what we wanted to do moving forward. But mm. through that process, we met some cinematographers who uh, happened to work at a Griffin Electric House here in Atlanta. Cool. And one of the cinematographers was like, you know, I just bought a red camera. Let's uh, make a movie. And we were like, yeah, let's do it. And Get it. While we were like, I don't know. And then and we were working on other projects. And we had one project that was supposed to come in that was going to be like a $3 million film. Ooh. Of course, it just didn't happen. Mm. We were tired of waiting. And we we're like, okay, well, then let's see what we can do. So we went in with the idea of like, we're just going to get money as we need it. So I was going to raise money and then shoot stuff and then edit something together with that stuff and raise more money. And that's what we ended up doing. And Smart. it became easier and easier yeah. to raise the money throughout filmmaking, the filmmaking. And really just getting started. I think that was the, the thing. It's like, we're just like, we need a, after for so long of trying to pursue a feature. It's like, let's just start making one. There you yeah. go. And get, get that ball rolling. We were very lucky in that the equipment we had access to is the best equipment, you yeah. know? Sure. So it was, we had some level of security knowing, okay, well, let's, let's uh, shoot some of the easier stuff to achieve, mm -hmm. snowball it from there. And uh, that, that worked, you know? That's cool. It, I mean, it, it does make a difference. It, like I've talked to some people that are like, oh, you know, you could just shoot it on anything. It's like, but nobody wants to watch a 480p image. They yeah. just don't. It could be the coolest thing. It could be like, it could be an alien landing for real. But if it's 4, 480, you're like, yeah. <sighs> it's something that I know, you know. Yeah. So it's like that's that was the for the longest time we were like we we wanted to do it, but we just didn't have the access to the equipment. No sure. Yeah. That's what constantly holds you holds you back from doing it on your own. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, then we had enough like crew and connections to where. Anyone we couldn't pay uh, or would trust us enough to just lend their time. Right. So that worked out. And this this one, Concrete Savannah, that's the one that you held on for so long, and now it's now it's real. That's yeah. pretty cool. How many shoot days was this one? Oh, I don't know. In total, it was nine months, basically. Forty five. Forty five days. Oh, and we just shot it on weekends, basically. Yeah. Hell yeah. We shot for eight days in Palm Beach. Yes. Oh, dude, right on. Yeah. That's crazy. How does it feel? You did your first feature, like it it's real. It's a good feeling, actually. Yeah. It's been yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's been nice. People responding. The, the few people who've seen it are responding well. Cool. Was this one of those like? So you you've got your culmination of things. You said there was like a loose script with this, like. Yeah. What's why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> it it did end up being an asset because uh, we could kind of change where the film was going. We weren't ever tied down to anything, so we tried to do stuff a little more interpretively because um, we knew, like, well, we may not be able to cover our asses in a scene that takes place later. Mm -hmm. We were up around, so I think it was a good process because, like, we. You know, I'd write the sides and you'd end up throwing stuff away. And sure. It, do that sort of subtraction process that you find something good. You know, find find out how to say something simpler. It sure. was really, I think it was informative for both of us of like what you can do, what you can cut out, you know. Yeah. As long as you just have a key idea of like what's the feeling this needs to be and what are the main things that need to happen. Just mm -hmm. some basic structure, the rest of it can and kind of fall into place and i think we were also like you know if we're successful with this movie we'll never be given the chance to do this again yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good point that's a good point point. and you just you run when you write a screenplay or things you run into like criticism of people you know and they mm -hmm. it. so it is kind of nice to just be like no we're just gonna shoot it you know we'll give yeah. it sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know that's true it's like you can't criticize something you can't see yeah. <laughs> so when you have something like this, like if you shot in Atlanta and you shot in Palm Beach, like, I mean, these are locations that you're switching things up. It sounds like you did things the hard way sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. We did. We, 
we had access to that mansion in uh, Palm Beach for a while. Mm -hmm. We were looking for something to do with it. But we weren't quite sure if we could maybe uh, be able to shoot there fully. But we, it just everything sort of happened like that, where we'd be like, "Oh, we have this. Let's let's do that." And of course, it's you know a twelve-hour drive. Sure. And all, we came with all of our crew, so they they took, they made the drive with us. That's when you know you got a good team. Yeah. yeah. So whose idea was this? Um, I think I had the first like general idea of like, I don't know, like we were thinking almost in a practical manner, you know, let's make a horror movie. Sure. Because not that we don't like horror movies or anything. It's just, uh, they seem to, uh, be more first film friendly. Definitely. You know, and, um, you can get distribution as we found out. Mm -hmm. them and, um, I, I think at the time I was sort of like, and we both were frustrated with like, uh, the world and like social media and sort of sure. what we're seeing is sort of the, the the duality of people's personas yeah mm -hmm. and that was the general idea and, it, and then it morphed a million times into what it is now yeah sure starting with that feeling yeah mm -hmm. and then it then it became i think kind of an interesting th a sort of experiment of like can we make a character that does something Sort of terrible at the beginning, and then you gain sympathy for them, even though they've still done that terrible thing. Sure. People in this weird moral dilemma. Well, it's like we we tried to make it like glamorous in the third act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're almost lured into rooting for her. I, I mean, I hope yeah. I hope the audience is almost rooting for her, and then at the end, the hope is that you're sort of awoken from that sort of fever dream. Just sure. You know how easily it is to be manipulated interesting did you being that this was a feature and going into it you knew that did you tackle it differently than you would like one of your shorts i wouldn't say that we like uh um, consciously did it demanded more of us so sure in order yeah. to do it it just demanded so much more effort yeah i think, I think that so. was that was a good thing for us yeah sure sure and you got your Whipper World peeps back. That's exciting. They were fantastic in the shorts. So when I saw them in the trailer, I was like, oh, awesome. I'm in. I'm in. Nice. What was the process of coming up with the design of the makeup? On the poster? Yeah. Um, I was really cool. I was looking at some fashion stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think we wanted like a modern uh, witch feeling. Yeah. A little bit of like, you know, sort of goddess kind of like, I guess she's a little bit like Kali, you know, in Hindu sure. sort of yeah. thing. And so then that kind of feeling. our makeup artist, Jeannie, um, she was like, what if I do this gold thing? Yeah. And, we were, and and then she started doing other stuff to yeah. it. And then we were like, oh, that's great. And it's just one of those things where we got her on our wavelength and yeah. You know, she was really able to collaborate with. Because we were thinking much more simple, just sort of white. Paint. Yeah, I think we were just thinking like full white paint, yeah. maybe with some black eye yeah. enhancement or something. But she was like, "Well, let me try this and this." And but I love, I love what you did with the, the stars. Yeah. That looks like you know her eyes are kind of coming out of space. Yeah, really. She actually had a, a, one of her assistants. They did like a full shoot where she did like three or four different designs. I don't think we, they weren't really, we didn't go with any of them, obviously, but um, she put a lot of time and effort in. And then it was just like, there on the day, we were like, okay, let's try this, you know, and it just worked out. It just works great. And then with Leah, you know, I think she just has such a classic face to her that just yeah. lends itself to that. When she stares at you that way, it just feels like a, an ancient being yeah. looking at you. Yeah. She was great to work with. I bet. I bet. Even, I mean, even from the trailer, you can tell just the caliber of the cast is just bonkers. You guys got really lucky. We, we got very lucky and everyone was a pleasure to work with. That's and they so all cool. showed up. That's the important thing. Sarah yeah. showed up every day. Amazingly. For and it was, it was hard <laughs> on her. She had to keep her hair the same length. Yeah. And oh, yeah. For nine months. Yeah. 
Ooh. You know, doesn't sound like rough to a guy, but to a lady, it can be, you know, sort of sure. a thing. More than that, she was just, you know, willing to help out in any way she could. That's cool. How long did that makeup take to put on? An hour or two, I think. I think so. Yeah, there were really? a while while we were yeah. shooting the um, the other part of that scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It that's was... pretty That's pretty fast, considering, because it looks really good. We shot yeah. that whole part was like at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Cool. We were really very tired yeah, <laughs> shooting but... that weird part. So. Yeah. Sure. Definitely in a hypnagogic state, yes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys, like, when you think about, because I've noticed a lot of your stuff's, like, on location. It's yeah. like outside and stuff like that. Do you do you find that challenging? And do you like it? We're both like street photographers, so I think it's like oh, right. perfect. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to like. Life gives you nuances that it's hard to replicate. Sure. You know, Stanley Kubrick would have people take photos of people's nightstands and dressers because yeah. you know he liked to shoot on a set, and he was also a street photographer and realized like. Uh, production design almost has to be like copied mm -hmm. instead of thought up. Yeah, you know, it's just like there's a there's a shop in the film, a wood shop. That's actually my dad's wood shop, and it, it's just covered in tools and dust and everything. There's no way with the greatest production design in the world you could ever create that. Sure, you know, sitting there, you know, waiting yeah. to be shot. So it, it it's kind of like filmmaking is a thing you plan, but it's also a performance art, and yeah. part of the performance is the world itself. So you get to you're just sort of enacting a photograph. And so sure. I, I appreciate that kind of the luck that plays into it, you know, yeah. allowing that little, yeah, little uncontrolled thing. Room for magic. Yeah. Yeah. You just sort of facilitate it and see what happens. Yeah. So do each of you have like a favorite part of the process with filmmaking? No, oh, man, I, I love it all. I yeah. think, I think, you I think so. Right? I think you like you like it up until the point you're sick of it then you have to switch yeah. <laughs> sure you like directing and now i'm done and then you get to edit it and you know yeah. throw away everything you thought was good <laughs> yeah that's fun i th it's hard to get sick of it because of like i've never been able to really work like a straight day job i mm -hmm. mean I have yeah. for necessity but like filmmaking it's you show up at a different place every yeah. day it's great you know sure and when you're uh when you're in post-production it's uh, your own little adventure. Too. Yeah. And I think it makes you just pay attention like nothing else. You have to really be constantly paying attention. And I, I like that, like having to be in that sort of mindset. You know, sure. Like, of everything. Yeah. It's that like constant, like mental engagement yeah. throughout. That makes sense. It's a really fun puzzle. Yeah. You know, I think so. Sure. Logistics of it all. Which do you find, because you know they say like a movie's made three different times. It's like in the writing, in the shooting, and in the editing. Mm -hmm. In the process, do you find one to be more difficult than the other? They're like, this one, I got to really tweak a bunch. Because I know some directors love being on set, and they hate being in editing. And some people, it's vice versa. Some people just love writing. Like, do you guys fall anywhere in there? I, I know, it's hard to say. I don't hate any part of it. That's good editing is really fun yeah because you start to get like oh it can be this or this or this you, you can know? really do. so i guess there's that of yeah. the fact that you can really change it sometimes makes you nervous at mm -hmm. that point because yeah. you're like there's so many possibilities I there think. there was a lot more like existential moments yeah during the editing process and we had to tell, sure. tell ourselves else. it's okay to like try something because you get right sort of like <laughs> Like we we don't have a studio telling us like to cut stuff out, you know, like right? Not on the movie, but we're still like, I don't know, is it okay to remove this? And I think it this taught us like, oh, you can really you should experiment with the editing, make it really big and fat at first, and then cut it down, and then yeah. maybe add some stuff back, but see if you can use the editing to really tell the story. So I think just that possibility yeah. was overwhelming, but now mm -hmm. I have a we were very lucky. Um, one of our cinematographers, Noah Beasley he would come in sometimes and help us edit and he's such a ruthless <laughs> like character when it comes to editing where he he has he has no qualms yeah. about being like that's garbage <laughs> <laughs> he 
was like I think two hours and ten minutes, and yeah. he's like, "It'll be great when it's ninety minutes." Yeah, you know, <laughs> like we could cut fifteen minutes. Yeah, out. yeah. <laughs> you're like that was four days. <laughs> but that's what what I realized in having like a proper like we I think edited for like three months, so we had a proper amount of uh, post. What you get to do is you kind of get to be selfish as a filmmaker. You get to put all of the parts you wanted in the movie. Yeah. Sure. You get to enjoy it and then be like, now I'm bored with it. Cut it out. Yeah. You know, sure. you make a, a cleaner film. So it's like you, you get you get to have your cake. In it. That's really something like that. I think going forward. It's like I don't I don't have a problem making like like shooting a movie like mm-hmm. um, you know day after day like you normally do. In fact, sure. I look forward to that because you can kind of just get it done and stay in that headspace and it's it's a taxing headspace to be in mm-hmm. you know it's a you know you're not sleeping well you're not getting your eight hours a night yeah. <laughs> but it's really fun but then it's done but i don't think i would uh be okay with making a movie where we were restricted on editing time to a certain mm. it at least needs to be like three or four months anything other sure than, it's like like you said you you are selfish and you're scared and i don't think that's probably going to change and you think content as much as possible is the thing that will save my movie you find Mm -hmm. explanation like what we found is like we had put all this stuff to try and explain things because we're like this is going to be confusing for people and then we slowly realized oh you don't need this you don't need this this says it in this look or whatever it's learning to trust that you really can do that which is hard for an indie movie because you're always like we have to convince people to keep watching it. I think sure. confusion might be yeah. a bad thing when it really needs yeah. it sometimes. We cut like one thing out one day and then it really worked. And I think that night we ended up yeah, cutting 30 it. minutes out of the film. <laughs> <laughs> We're just thing. tossing yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> First cut is the deepest. <laughs> You're like, we survived. We survived. <laughs> really what it is we're still here we're alive and it's better it's better better now let's cut more sure so when you're shooting do you go in with the idea of like just shoot as much as possible so you have so many options later in the edit yeah we don't do a lot of angles sure we did shoot a lot as much as much as we possibly could yeah Mm -hmm. and i think our general consensus was like since we were making a loose since we had such a loose script of like okay let's cut this movie into as long as it po- every single bit of image we have let's put it in there and mm-hmm. then dial it back and of course when you do that you're like but it's no i like all this stuff <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't sort of keep the contract with yourself of like we're gonna cut it down yeah. sure no it's all beautiful yeah. <laughs> like, it would take so long to untape that film you know put it back together you know it's like no problem now you know on a computer you can always back yeah. sure actually yeah i totally forgot about that you shot it's part of this on film yeah you, know, you, you just like things difficult yeah, i guess so. <laughs> <laughs> how was that because there's it stock was fun. like it was really fun it wasn't shooting on film seems more daunting than it really is it's just okay. more time uh it takes more time to set up mm takes more time to shoot and it takes more time to get the footage back but that's the only yeah. difference really if you know how film works you know sure so yeah it was a fair it, that was a really fun day it was like i think it was our last shoot was shooting film i think so yeah oh um, really the yeah. summer is like june yeah yeah Hot so day. yeah that was fun we would have shot the whole movie on film if we could have afforded it so that was our concession was well, like we'll shoot at least a small part, you know, because it's kind of a movie within the movie. Yeah. Sure. That's um, cool. And now you can say you've done it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Not a lot of people can say that anymore. And the Kodak people are really nice. Oh, like, yes, they were great. When we picked up our uh, hard drive, they, they had like two people there like to meet us and talk to us about like what we wanted to do in the future. And they're really? trying to foster like uh younger filmmakers shooting film and they will help people out if you need it they'll like they'll give you wow so if you want to test stuff for your next film because you got to convince someone they'll help you out there too so people should just reach out to them yeah how cool is that and that's also where um pc and e came in handy who was the production company that our friends worked for because they loaned us the the 16 millimeter camera we used for that and Mm -hmm. everything 
Yeah. You know, that helped a ton. Yeah. But yeah, shooting film, it's not, it's, it's really fun. It's actually like, uh, it's magical because, you know, you don't have that instant feedback loop. Yeah. Sure. It's a lot, it's a lot more heightened. Right. You really got to trust the people. <laughs> and when you're done with it, you got to keep it in the fridge and stuff. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. I forget the temperature and everything. Sheesh. There's like cool things you can do. Like, you know, when you shoot film, you should develop it right away. Mm-hmm. But we wanted this film, the film we shot, to have like a little bit desaturation. So we just kept it in the fridge for a few weeks. Oh. Like every day it's losing like satur- a little bits of saturation. Sure. Develop it and stop it in its process. That That's was so cool. Like the sort of organic uh, nature it has. You did some like manual chemical editing. Yeah, that's right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And feature, like, of course, the most daunting project to date for sure. You're like, let's also throw film onto this. Yeah. I like it. I respect that a lot, guys. And it's, I mean, it's coming out in like, what, a week? Yeah. This is so cool. Like, I'm genuinely really excited for you guys. The trailer looked awesome. I'm pumped. I got it pre-ordered. It's going to be good. It, like, when you're thinking back on all of this, now you've shot on film, now you've shot a feature, you've done all these things, is there any lessons you've taken away from the process up to date? And do you have any advice for people that want to start their journey in filmmaking? Um, yeah. I, I would just say... You have to do it. And maybe that sounds super simple, but that, does, that doesn't mean just like make a movie. You have to do everything that it requires of you. And that means networking and getting your hands dirty and being uncomfortable, but it's really worth it. You, know, you, can, you can do something when you actually decide, I'm just going to, we're going to do this. We're going to, yeah. we're going to make it happen. Sure. Yeah. It is possible because it's like forever for years we heard like filmmakers say that just go make a movie and you, you find that so annoying because you're sure. like, <laughs> but they're they're really right in a way and i think it's like what you should do is just try and find some somebody you know somebody you know probably works at a grip house or doing mm-hmm. something yeah and or has some kind of equipment and it, and then you form that network with them and you form a greater community you know that's what we should all be doing because you can't make a movie by yourself so you should be connecting with people yeah really. and if you're like a, the mindset i think a lot of the times and this certainly for us was that someone was going to um come and you know based off our short films or scripts give us the money to make a movie mm-hmm. like the, the proper way so to speak sure but what i think we found out is that if you can't hack it on your own making a movie Mm -hmm. probably have no business taking people's money to do it that's a good point so especially when it is possible nowadays like you know that a friend was able to buy a 35 millimeter cinema camera you know it's like of professional quality now that's successful we use share grid a lot on this movie that was super useful very Mm -hmm. Um, so that allowed just us to have access to all kinds of. I don't think that's cheaper. in every city. No, it's but mostly. there's other services for renting gear. Sure. But they they're invaluable for making like yeah. an independent. Film. Especially because like a lot of the times on weekends they'll give you like weekend deals, so you you just pay for one day and you get like two days. Oh, smart. But that's just like one example. It's like you have to be uh, the most like. Uh, as sharp as you can be, mm-hmm. um, you have to take advantage of literally everything you can possibly exploit. Yeah, and and that's probably more than you expect because really this movie is a proof of most of the stuff in this movie is just stuff we had connections to. Sure, I, mean, I didn't think we thought we had this many connections until we tried to assemble it, yeah. put it together. Yeah, and I think going like uh, going forward, we have no no problem like looking at a budget that's like five ten million mm-hmm. and how to bring that home and that's that's a film school in itself we couldn't have got without making our, our own movie and raising the money ourselves yeah. and putting money in ourselves and like really being on the line you come to appreciate how much it means like uh, you know when an investor 
decides to give you money, they that's they're not really okay if you don't give it back to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're at least no. They're ne- they're, they're at least not going to be very friendly with you at that point once you haven't given it back to them. Sure. Sure. Uh, that's a le- th- those lessons are sort of hard to learn any other way. But you know, and you, yeah. and once you've like put put money put your own money into it, then you're like got to show up, got to finish it. You know, yeah. and I think it's sticking with that going all the way. Yeah. Really I mean, we're lucky. We've the movie hasn't even come out. We've already like uh, grossed, you know, a decent amount of our budget. Hell yeah! Congratulations. That's huge, especially for your first feature. Good lord. Yeah. Not bad, guys. Not bad. So, where can people find this movie? On the second, it'll be available on all VOD. All VOD. That's like transactional, which is like it'll be on iTunes. Uh, Prime Video, Google Play, PlayStation, Voodoo, Vimeo. Vimeo. Get it. And then anywhere you have cable in America, any of the cable providers, you'll be able to rent it on there as well, like Comcast and all the other ones. So that's February 2nd. Killing it. Killing it. That's so exciting. I can't wait to watch it. It's going to be so cool. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably be available in Europe later this year. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. That's so cool. And uh, just like that, guys, we've been talking for an hour already. We did it. We did it. We did it. Not bad at all. This was so fun. It was so cool. I I was so happy to meet you. It's like friend of a friend type of thing. It's like, if he's your friend, yeah, we're in. Let's do this. So I'm so excited to talk to you. Yeah. Um, So before I let you guys go, though, I have to ask, where can people find you online? Uh, Other shorts? Give me some plugs. What you got? Um, Online? I mean, I'm on Instagram. Perfect. Mostly sharing my photography, but like a little bit of like film stuff. Hell yeah. You can find me on there. My screen name is Psychedelic Hemingway. Oh, love it. <laughs> love it. I'm, I'm well. also on Instagram. Similar sort of photography stuff. I'm at that Joshua underscore mitten. Perfect. Perfect. Guys, this was so cool. Congratulations on your first feature. I can't wait to watch it. It's going to be awesome. And... <laughs> Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. I've also got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Bernice, Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.